Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brani and I'm one half of the Indecisive Readers. Today I'm here to film my April wrap up. In April I finished 10 books. I also started two that I just haven't quite got round to finishing yet, so I've not been able to include them here. However, my average rating was about four stars, which is very good i was gonna say it's pretty good that's like incredible that's so so many books and yeah i'm just really really pleased with them and i will get in straight away and tell you what books i've read so the first prompt i had was been on tbr for over six months and um i had to choose punishment for this because the book i chose was heart and soul by kristen burnham this had been on my net galley shelf for about a year probably actually even longer and to be honest i was just picking it up to get rid of it. I thought I would DNF it because it just didn't sound like my kind of thing and I regretted getting it kind of as soon as it came in. Um, however, I didn't hate it, it just wasn't for me and so I knew I'd kind of be forcing myself to read it and so yeah, I just low-key DNF'd it, not because it was bad but just because it wasn't for me. And then I never managed to get another one because all the other books I read or a lot of the other books I read were ARCs or were books I picked up on a whim or were books I had only wanted to read within the last few months. So the next prompt I had was Author of Colour. I've kind of gone a bit more vague and just said non-white kind of author. Um, and for that I have chosen The Life of the Midnight Stars by Rena Rosner. And the author is Jewish and this tells the story of three Jewish sisters in the kind of, I want to say like 13th, 14th century. Um, and the lives they lead, there's a bit of magic but it's a very low fantasy book, which was kind of my... I don't want to say problem, but one of my issues with it. So I rated it about three and a half stars. I really, really loved the beginning. I flew through it. It was so easy to read. It was beautifully written. I really, really enjoyed all the characters. I thought the three sisters were really interesting. They were so different from each other. And they showed such a genuine sister relationship because they didn't always like each other. And so I thought that was quite interesting to explore. However, when it finished, it just kind of fizzled out. I didn't necessarily expect it to have lots of magic, but there was almost kind of a magical presence in the background and then it got to the end and it just wasn't a thing, um, which maybe was on me for expecting too much, but it did kind of lead into it. How it ended was just kind of bittersweet. It was realistic, maybe it was a bit sad and yeah, all these kind of happy joyous moments weren't quite there at the end which was a bit of a shame however i did love all the other aspects of it it was a very very good book i really enjoyed the relationships in it not only family but also love and different kinds of love and yeah i would recommend if you just don't expect it to be a like big fantasy book my next prompt was actually a punishment and the one I chose was Neck Alley Pick which was quite handy because I had a few I wanted to read. Um, I was hoping to have a physical copy of this by the time this video went up but it's not here so that makes me sad. Um, but that book is In the Ravenous Start by A.M. Strickland. I rated this five stars. It was one of my most anticipated books of the year and I was so excited that it kind of lived up to those expectations. It was fantastic and I knew from the beginning that I was going to love it. And one of the reasons why I knew I was going to love it from the beginning was the action started straight away. I think I must have read a few books recently where it takes a few chapters to kind of set it up and get into it whereas this just kind of threw you in at the deep end and you not only learned it as the character did, but you learned it as it was just generally kind of explored in society. There was so much that kind of wasn't known. And so it was just generally being explored as it went through. And that was a really interesting way to kind of handle it. I thought that characters were fantastic too. The main like sell of this for me was that it was a pansexual main character who was tempted, I suppose, by a princess who she shouldn't like and her undead spirit guardian um so there's a bit of a not necessarily a female female male romance but there's kind of a loveness between them and um, there's also a non-binary asexual pan-romantic character which was fab there was just 
it was handled so well all the different characters were incredible um, the main character, Rovan, was really interesting. At the beginning, she wasn't necessarily likeable. She was quite prickly, which made her an interesting character, but she wasn't necessarily likeable. And she was very selfish. But as the story went on, she started to become a bit less selfish. And so that was interesting to see. I did like her relationship between the two. I especially liked the one between her and the undead guardian because I suppose that was less straightforward and so it was interesting to see how that was going to develop. The magic system and the setting were just really interesting and it had a few twists I wasn't expecting and then there was just kind of like a general commentary on feminism which I always find really interesting. The next book I read was for the prompt odd number of pages and so I read Living and Loving in the Age of AIDS by Derek Frost. This is a memoir about a man who lived through the Age of AIDS with his partner called Jay, who tests positive and I suppose it's their story, what they did to get through but also what they did to help other people get through. It was a very interesting book, it's not the kind of thing I'd usually pick up. I am not a big non-fiction fan and definitely not a big memoir kind of biography person and so I kind of I don't want to say I had to make myself read it, but like it wasn't a thing that I would have like chosen if I hadn't been sent it. However, I am really pleased to have read it in the end because it was learning about a bit of history I didn't know anything about. And so that was kind of a good experience. However, I found the beginning a bit difficult to get through. And I know it's going to sound stupid, but I think it was too much about sex for me to be interested. And that's such a... I, <laughs> I don't want to say it's stupid but like because of the topic of the book it obviously has to be about sex somewhat but I think I just didn't want to read about it and I think the beginning was almost quite self-centered again sounds wrong because it is a memoir but that's the only word I can think of it was very much focused on him and his privilege however as the book went on you begin to see how the author and his partner use their privilege to help other people out which was interesting and yeah it was just it was a good because I learned more about the science that I didn't really know anything about but yeah it's not one I would usually reach for and therefore I don't really know how to rate it but I did rate it I think three and yeah three stars. The next prompt I had was Animal on the cover and so for that I read The Crooked Mask by Rachel Burge. This was the sequel to The Twisted Tree and I really enjoyed it. Um, I actually think I enjoyed it more than The Twisted Tree which is quite unusual I suppose for sequels. Not always unusual but you know like when a first book's good it's hard to do really really well in the second. However I think this one did it. There was an element of mystery that kept the story being interesting, kept me wanting to read it. So I think that was handled really well. I thought the inclusion of new characters and I suppose new gods was really interesting. And yeah, I didn't expect some of the twists that came. I thought the setting was really well done. I love the kind of creepy circus. I think that worked really well. And yeah, I definitely recommend, I don't know if this is a duology or if there are gonna be other books because I think it ended on quite a nice note. However, I would also read more about them. Um, but I really liked where Martha, she called Martha, I think she's called Martha, it's been too long. I really liked where her story went at the end and yeah, I think she was just a really interesting character. She took control of her own destiny and I think that was like a really nice kind of message to take from the book. The next prompt I had was Found Family and so for that I read A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Miles because there are many, many found family elements in that. And so the best thing I really enjoyed about it was, of course, the kind of exploration of these relationships that have already been set up in previous books, but getting to see them more because we get to see other characters' perspectives. And so that was quite a nice thing to read. I wouldn't want to necessarily read whole stories from those other characters, but it was nice to see like different kind of glimpses into their world, how they told their story. I will be picking up A Court of Silver Flames this month, hopefully, whenever the loan comes in. And so, yeah, I'm excited to read that when I can. I thought having it as a novella was a really interesting way to, I suppose, explore the kind of PTSD the characters get after the 
events of the previous three books and what I really liked was there was almost like, I don't want to say it was periods because they're fae and so they're slightly different, however there was explicit mention of whatever that was. I rated this one three stars. The last prompt I had was adult and so for that I read Malice by Heather Walter. I did actually read the ebook which was from NetGalley and I love this. I rated it four and a half stars. It was so so interesting. This is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty but from the Maleficent kind of character from her point of view and it has a female female romance and I think it was just really really well done. I really like Alice's character but I also like the other ones around her. I think Alice was really interesting as a narrator, someone who has always been hated on by other people and how she now handles the world and so then I think having a niceness and getting to explore that makes for her having a more interesting character. I thought Aurora was a fascinating character, I really really liked her and I liked how she was almost a vessel to explore feminism. So often we get books with just queendoms or just kingdoms and so I thought this was interesting because it's like a queendom that has fallen to the kings and so I thought that was an interesting contrast because then you could use Aurora to like explore wanting to be a queen and wanting to like take control of the realm again and so I thought that was really good. I loved the cake and I loved the other characters and I think the setting was fab. And then the ending was very dramatic, I kind of didn't expect it and yeah I'm looking forward to reading on. The next book I read was Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, You Can't See the Spine or the title. I was so excited to be sent this because this was kind of being like sold as the next Natalie Haynes, the next Madeline Miller and I really enjoyed both of those and I can definitely see the kind of like harken back to both those stories. It seems very Cersei because a lot of it is about a lady on an island, but I did enjoy this more than Cersei, so I don't know. Um, I feel this was a really interesting retelling. This is the retelling of Ariadne, who helps Theseus escape the Minotaur, and her sister Phaedra. I didn't realise there was more of their story than they helped him escape the Minotaur, and so when that happened and then the story continued, I don't want to say too much because, like, spoilers, um, I was just really really surprised. I didn't know it was gonna happen and it was a very weird reading experience. When it happened I wanted to like look on Wikipedia to be like does that happen in the myth but then I realised that actually kind of counts as a spoiler so I didn't do that. I thought it was beautifully written. It was so like lyrical but not in a kind of like pretentious way. I have tabbed it a lot. I love the kind of discussions on feminism and I thought the two sisters were a really interesting contrast because they weren't both one kind of woman but yet they both kind of, I don't want to say spurned what a typical woman is but I suppose spurned the typical female role in kind of Greek myths and one wants to be a mother, one doesn't want to be a mother, one wants to be a ruler and one's happy to kind of stay at that edge and I thought that was a really interesting contrast. I liked how both of them were used to kind of explore different kinds of love like spurned love, actual kind of genuine romantic love but romantic love that sometimes goes stale, forced love and familial love as well. It was very very interesting. I thought the different men included gave a good contrast of the different men in Greek myths. So you've got like a tyrant, you've got a hero, you've got a potentially good guy who's not always good. And yeah I really really enjoyed it. I rated it four stars. The next book I read was Ahead of Her Time by Judy Biaitkus. I will, I won't learn it. Um, this was a really interesting book for me to read because it's telling the story I suppose of um, Judy her, um, who created her own publishing house and it's telling about her journey I suppose not only through publishing but as a business and I thought it was really really interesting. I think it'd be the kind of thing that anyone should read uh, whether or not they want to go into publishing because it kind of talks about mistakes made, how they grew, how they took on those mistakes and made changes from those and I thought it was really really interesting. It was a very um, weird experience to hear her talking about all these like publishers or these literary agents and I'm like oh I know who they are and it was just interesting to learn kind of more about the different departments and what they do and yeah I definitely definitely recommend. I rated it four stars and I think it was fabulous. 
The final two I will talk about together because they are in the same series and that is An Ember in the Ashes and A Torch Against the Night by Sabah Tahir. I'm going to put them that way around because I'm really offended by this one. It should have had the like new cover but this one turned up. I'm not very pleased. I'm going to complain about it but um, I can hold them up for the video which is um, what I wanted them for. Um, I really really enjoy these. I picked these up from the library on a whim thinking oh, I really want an audiobook to listen to. Oh both of these are available Maybe I'll listen to the first one and then if I enjoy it, I'll pick up the second one. Almost like as soon as I picked up the first one, I put the second one on hold and then the third and now the fourth. And they are just so good. Although I couldn't necessarily tell you what specifically was good about them. Sometimes you read a book and you're like, wow, this thing was incredible. But when I'm reading these, I'm just like, the whole thing is incredible. I love them both. Love them all so, so much. And... I love all aspects of it. It was very reminiscent of, I feel like the City of Brass, I really enjoy that. And so I think kind of having a similar kind of world and having a similar narrator work for this. I really like the main characters, Leia and Elias. I thought they were very interesting. And I liked how they, I suppose, bounce off each other, but bounce off other characters. I think the side characters in this were fantastic. I also liked the kind of I suppose pacing of the book it was very high stakes with the trials and something to always work towards be that the rebellion or a prison break on the second one but although they were main characters I never felt like they had it easy sometimes when you're reading about main characters you're like oh they're gonna get out but I don't actually think this was the case in this I think for every good thing these two had they actually had like three problems so swings and roundabouts for these um however i'm so excited to continue reading them like i said i'm on the third one right now the fourth one is like gonna be ready soon i hope but yeah i'm really enjoying them i wish i hadn't come to them so late but then again at least i wasn't tempted to buy the fairy loot ones these are some of the books i read in april i'm really pleased with the ones i have here and i think just generally it was a great reading month let me know down in the comments if you have read or want to read any of these. Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you in another video. Bye!